comedies didn't have to make sense back in the 80s, they just had to make us laugh. Volare, oh, e cantare, oh. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 comedies of the 1980s. For our series on the top comedies of all time, We've chosen comedy films per decade based on their iconic status, critical acclaim, box office success, watchability, and, of course, how funny they are. This is part of a series of videos spanning the decades of comedic films from the 1930s to the 2000s. Okay, okay, you start. <clears throat> who's that? Number 10, National Lampoon's Vacation. Marty Moose, who's the star of our favorite show? Marty Moose. Chevy Chase delivers more comedy gold as the patriarch of the Griswold family. When I was a boy, just about every summer we'd take a vacation. Who's just trying to show everyone a good time. Chase's default character of a clueless man unafraid to experience new things works perfectly here as he slowly goes nuts trying to get his family from Chicago to California. Honey, I'm not an ordained minister. I'm doing my best, okay? All while keeping everything from falling apart. Clark, if you lost your mind, where did you get that? Sporty good star, honey. Vacation wasn't only a commercial success, but has since achieved cult status and spawned several sequels. Well, I'll tell you something. This is no longer a vacation. It's a quest. It's a quest for fun. I'm going to have fun, and you're going to have fun. We're all going to have so much f***ing fun when we need plastic surgery to remove our goddamn smiles. Number nine, Tootsie. Tootsie, take ten. Ron, my name is Dorothy. It's not Tootsie or Toots or Sweetie or Honey or Dow. Oh, Christ. No, just Dorothy. Dustin Hoffman sees what it's like to live life in a pair of high heels in this gender-bending comedy directed by Sidney Pollack. <laughs> Hoffman cross-dresses as Dorothy Michaels so he can get a job in the acting business. Oh, God, I begged you to get some therapy. Most of the laughs come from Hoffman learning that there's a huge difference between men and women and his eventual embodiment of the idea of equal rights. I have to kiss Dr. Brewster. Oh yeah, he kisses all the women on the show. We call him the tongue. Much of Tootsie's success can be attributed to its effective fusion of the ridiculous with reality, as well as its sensitivity and thoughtfulness. But I was a better man with you as a woman than I ever was with a woman as a man. So it's no surprise it was recognized with 10 Oscar nominations. Stop thinking of me as a woman, Medford, and start thinking of me as a person. That's what Southwick General is made of, people. What? <laughs> Number eight, planes, trains, and automobiles. You know, it's just harder for two people to yeah. travel, you know. Yeah. Steve Martin and John Candy are the perfect comedic match in this film about a man who just wants to get home for Thanksgiving. I want a f***ing car right now. After Neil and Dell are forced together following a series of unfortunate circumstances due to a snowstorm, Dell tries to make the best of a bad situation, but Neil can't stand it. That's the understatement of the year. What ensues is a slew of timeless comedy moments. Why did you kiss my ear? Why are you holding my hand? Where's your other hand? Between two pillows. Those aren't pillows. <laughs> Of course, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles also boasts a big heart, which makes it all the more poignant and very deserving of a spot on this list. And, uh, I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. Hello, Mr. Griffiths. Wait a moment! It's fish! Isn't it? Number seven, a fish called Wanda. Down the hatch! Monty Python stars John Cleese and Michael Palin give Hollywood films a whirl in this heist comedy. Ecolomo. British surrealist humor meets good old American storytelling to produce a flick that is funny from start to finish. And I deeply regret any distress that my comments may have caused you or your family. Cleese has great chemistry with Jamie Lee Curtis, and the scene where Palin's hitman character must kill a witness is a hilarious classic. Smell! Smell! Smell, Now! Movie watchers loved it, and so did the critics. 
Aside from multiple award nominations, actor Kevin Kline napped the Oscar trophy for Best Supporting Actor. Nix! Zip! Diddly! Popkiss! Niente. I heard a band that, for me, redefined the word rock and roll. That band was Britain's now legendary Spinal Tap. Number six, this is Spinal Tap. If you can see, yeah, the numbers all go to 11. One of the very first movies to help popularize the mockumentary film genre, this is Spinal Tap gives viewers a satirical inside look into the wild lives of rock stars. Rob Reiner, Michael McKean, Harry Shearer, and Christopher Guest all give hilarious performances as they navigate the highs and lows of the music industry. They're not going to release the album because they have decided that the cover is sexist. Well, so what? Yes. But what's wrong with being sexy? The documentary-style shooting gave the actors room to work off one another and improvise. While positive reception from audiences, critics, and actual rock stars helped turn it into a cult classic. Oh, don't well, touch I, it. I wasn't going to touch it. No, don't touch it. I was it. just, just pointing at it. I, well, don't point even. Don't even point? Be, no. It can't be played. Never. I mean, I, Can I, I look I, at no. it? No. Hey, hey, watch my helmet. <laughs> Number five, Spaceballs. Spaceballs? Oh, shit. There goes the planet. Mel Brooks is the master of puns, and he's at it again in this classic spoof of the sci-fi genre. In it, none of the great space epics is safe from the director and actor's biting satire. What do you want? It's me. It's us! Spaceballs breaks the fourth wall mercilessly, and the references are positively gut-busting. And tell me I'm your own. Check, please. Despite initial mixed reviews, it's since become one of Brooks' most popular and beloved flicks. And then there's Rick Moranis. I can't breathe in this thing! Who gives one of his most memorable performances as the vile Dark Helmet. No, you are mine. Not so fast, Helmet. Lone Star. Yes, it's me. I'm here to save my girlfriend. Hi, honey. Number four. Ghostbusters. Are you a god? No. Then... Yes. They ain't afraid of no ghosts. Let's show this prehistoric bitch how we do things downtown. Sporting much the same cast and crew as the 1981 war comedy Stripes. If I get killed, my blood is on your hands. Just don't get it on my shoes, okay? This seminal 80s supernatural comedy reaches almost Star Wars levels of transcendence. Incredible. And it caters to young and old alike, even to this day. I see. In it, a group of down-and-out paranormal researchers start up their own ghost hunting business. One, two, three, oh. Eccentric, infectious, and filled with special effects. Oh, disgusting blob. Ghostbusters also spawned all kinds of highly collectible merchandise, cartoons, a sequel, and a rumored third film. Great. When someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes! Number three, The Naked Gun from the Files of Police Squad. I'm Lieutenant Frank Drebin, Police Squad. And don't ever let me catch you guys in America. Keep your eyes glued to the screen or you'll miss something. As the first installment in the Naked Gun series of films delivers a non-stop stream of sight gags and toilet humor. <laughs> Be fooled by its seemingly lowbrow subject matter. Nice beaver. Thank you. I just had it stuffed. Let me help you with that. The Naked Gun is a hilarious slapstick comedy for people of all ages and generations. Cowards no longer willing to fight. And it still hasn't lost its comedic touch more than 25 years after its release. Please, throw down your guns. Leslie Nielsen is the king of 80s comedy, and he doesn't disappoint. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey. Number two, Caddyshack. Yeah, what do you think? It's really, uh, it's really awful. With comedy legends like Chevy Chase, Bill Murray, Rodney Dangerfield, and many others, 
this film packs one hell of a punch to the funny bone. Oh, Mrs. Crane, you're a little monkey woman, you know that? You're a little monkey woman. You're lean and you're mean and you're not too far between either, I bet, are you, huh? From start to finish, Caddyshack supplies classic quotes. Look at that one. When the last time I saw a mouth like that, I had a hook in it. Side-splitting performances. This is across uh, a bluegrass, Kentucky bluegrass uh, featherbed bench and uh, Northern California Sensimia. And overall hilarity. What do you say we bust up this joint, huh? Yeah. <laughs> anything can happen in this no-holds-barred laugh riot, and almost anything does. Sure. When it comes to sports comedies, this flick is truly a hole in one. Oh, he got all of that one. He's got to be pleased with that. The crowd is just on his feet here. He's a Cinderella boy. Before we unveil our pick for comedy of the 1980s, here are a few honorable mentions. Excellent! Look me in the eye. 50,000. Yes, 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 I know it. Thank you, Bertie. Thank you so much. Lionel! From the African Education Conference, right? Yes, Simon. I was director of cultural events at the Haile Selassie Pavilion. I remember the pavilion. We had big fun there. Bukwili, 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 ha! Bukwili, bukwili, ha! When you're away through here, gone each day to be loved, to be loved. Wow, what a feeling! <laughs> passenger on this plane will have fish for dinner. We'll become violently ill in the next half hour. Number one, airplane. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your flight. By the way, is there anyone on board who knows how to fly a plane? If this movie proves anything, it's the comedies don't have to make sense to be hilarious. All right, I'm going to unlock the automatic pilot. On the surface, Airplane is a spoof of earlier disaster films. But as soon as the opening credits roll, the audience is also taken on a non-stop roller coaster ride of sight gags and hilarious dialogue. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. Lloyd Bridges is especially funny in his role as Steve McCroskey, an air traffic worker who slowly works his way through all the drugs he can find. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines. But thanks to its cheesiness, silliness, and it flows through and it flows through me. And use of slapstick. Read about Jehovah's Witness? Ah. <clears throat> How about Buddhism? <clears throat> the satirical comedy is often considered one of the decade's finest flicks and is also our top pick. That hunky muffin mess my old lady? Got to be running cold upside down his head, you know? <laughs> hey, home, I can dig it. No, he ain't gonna lay no more big rap up on you, man. Do you agree with our list? I'd call that a big yes. What's your favorite 1980s comedy? I'm not allowed to speak. For more hilarious top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. All right now, everybody, get in crash position.